Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Torah study. We're learning the laws of Pesach. Pesach is in two weeks since this past Friday night. Warren, you ready? Excited? Good. Let's learn the laws of the Seder. Learn, learn what you're supposed to do at the Seder. It goes like this. Even though every Shabbos and Yantiv, a person is able to make Kiddush before dark. On a Friday night, you can make Kiddush before dark. For example, uh, in the summertime over here, it gets dark. Um, Maybe not nine o'clock, but let's say eight eight thirty, right? So you can make kiddush earlier, but are you allowed to make kiddush at three thirty? No, too early. You, the only use you can start is, is a time called plaga mincha. Plaga mincha is half of the mincha. It's a, it's a halachic time, which I'm not going to get into right now, but um, it's the earliest definition of nighttime. If you look at JewishGardens.com forward slash halachic times, I think is the link. That's JewishGardens.com forward slash halachic times. You can see every day of the year, you can actually change your location and you can find out what is the halachic time. The plaga mincha is the one that you're looking for. That's the earliest, yeah, that's what it is. JewishGardens.com forward slash halachic times. For example, today's um, plaga mincha is at 6.24 p.m. So even though nightfall today is at 8, 8 or 3 p.m. in Palm Beach Gardens and sunset is at 7.39, the earliest time for nighttime would be 6.24 p.m. today in Palm Beach Gardens, right? So normally you are allowed to bring Shabbos in early, Shabbos and Yantam. However, and it's even better because that's a conquest. You're conquering from, from weekday into Shabbos. You're actually transforming the mundane into the whole. Nevertheless, on Pesach, you're not allowed to do that. You cannot start Pesach before dark. Why? Because tonight, tonight would be 8 3, yeah. Tonight, uh, night falls at 8 3, yeah. But 6.24 is the, is the first time of legal nighttime, which means if tonight was, yeah, was Shabbos, you're allowed to start Shabbos from 6.24, not earlier, right? Now, the reason you can't start Pesach early on the Seder night is because the mitzvahs of the night apply only at nighttime. So there's two different elements at play here. One, I see Winston just posted it to YouTube. Thank you, Winston. One element of the mitzvah of Pesach is to is the mitzvah of Yantiv. Yantiv, which means the holy day. From the perspective of the holy day, you can take the mundane day and turn it into a holy day by extending the holiness of the day a little bit before. Right. That, that would be an extension, a conquest that, that would apply to a, to every Shabbos Yontav. However, when it comes to Pesach, it has unique mitzvahs that have to be observed at the nighttime. So whilst you could extend the holiness of the day by davening my river early, let's say, you cannot start the mitzvah of the Seder until nighttime. What are those mitzvahs? The mitzvah of eating matzah has to be at nighttime. Just like the carbon Pesach, the Paschal sacrifice, about which it says explicitly in the Torah, we read this past Shabbos in the, in the third Torah, Parshas HaChodesh, which was, you shall eat the flesh, the meat, on this evening, on this night. It has to be eaten at nighttime. That was the command that Moses told the Jewish people by God. On the first night of, of, you know, when they covered it, when they uh, painted the doors with blood and God passed over the doors, that was the night of Pesach. It had to be at nighttime. They couldn't do it before nighttime. So too, we commemorate that same mitzvah. And that was the mitzvah of generations that Moses commanded the Jews to do this every night, every year at nighttime. Similarly, the mitzvah of the four cups of wine also has to be done specifically at nighttime. It's not going to help. You can have eight cups of wine in the daytime, but it's not going to help. You might not find you. Yeah. Similarly, the cup of Kiddush. Now, since the first the first cup of wine of the four cups, you know why we drink four cups of wine in Pesach? Because they correspond to the four expressions of redemption. Good morning, Dan and, and Ed. They they correspond and Corina. They they correspond to the four expressions of of redemption that were stated in the Torah with regard to the Exodus from Egypt. And I will take you out, and I will redeem you. And I will save you and I will bring you. Right? Those four expressions of redemption correspond to the four cups of wine which we drink, right? So the first one of those four cups of wine is the cup of Kiddush. So you can't say, well, I'm going to make Kiddush early and then we'll do the rest of the Seder later. No. Vitsesi, Vitsalti, and I will save you is the second one. Vigualti, and I will redeem you is the third one. Vilakakti, and I will bring you. Um, therefore, we cannot make the Kiddush until it's certainly nighttime. When is it certainly nighttime? After twilight. When is that? Nightfall. When there's three stars out. That's the time when it's legally nighttime. For example, for Shabbos to be out. 
and you can start mundane activity on a Saturday night. For example, for the for Yom Kippur to be over so you can start eating. Three stars, right? That's the legal definition of nightfall, right? Same thing with the Seder. You know, it has to be at nighttime, so it's got to be after three stars are out. In gardens, I believe this year it's going to be 8.20 p.m. This year on Friday night. I could probably tell you. Um, yeah, it's very easy to find that out. All you do is you go to that leak link that Winston just posted, and then you change the date to April 15th, and I'll tell you exactly when it is. So this year, um, nightfall is 8.09 p.m. 8.09 Sunset is at 7.45 p.m. Candle lighting is at 7.27 p.m. But half mincha, the plaga mincha is at 6.28. So, le- so, so the earliest observ- observance of night would be 6.28 p.m. But again, you can't do it until it's certainly nighttime. 8 or 9 p.m. Exactly. You have to light candles for Shabbos. See, it's very interesting. Very interesting. See, it's two sides of the same coin. You can't light candles in the nighttime because it's Shabbos. So you got to light the candles before nighttime. When do you light the candles? Not even in twilight. It's got to be when it's still certainly daytime, which is before sunset. So you have to light the candles before sunset because that has to be when it's for sure daytime. You know, the Rebbe once pointed out that we don't light candles Friday night. Don't say, tell, don't tell people to light candles Friday night. You don't light candles Friday night. You light them Friday afternoon. Erev Shabbos. Very interesting. Very interesting, right? So there's a lot of legal things, you know, the most, whatever. so Friday night candles, yes, you have to light um, before. By the way, if it wasn't Friday night, the first night of the Seder, if it was a Monday night, then you could light candles later. What about Saturday night? Too? Same thing. You can't, no, on the contrary, Saturday, Saturday night, not only can you light them later, you must light them later. Why? You can't light, you can't light anything on Shabbos until it's certainly nighttime, which is why the second Seder this year starts real late. What? Exactly. You don't want to mess with it with a piece of Shabbos. You don't want to mess with the holiness of Shabbos. And I wanted to give you this little angle. If you work in Shabbos, if you violate the Shabbos with lighting a candle, something is lighting a flick, flipping a switch. You're it, it's it would be the same thing as checking your email when you're alone with your wife on a honeymoon. Think about that. What you're doing is you're not spiting anybody else. Yes, you're violating God's command, but you're violating your own intimacy, right? It, it's a very powerful concept. You don't want to mess with that. This is your private time. You don't want to mess, okay? So beautiful observation there. Thank you, Rod. But but if it was, Rob, and if it was a Monday night, let's say, when you don't have the problems of Shabbos, so you, you can light before dark, before sunset. You don't have to light before sunset. You can light after nightfall as long as, as long as it's from... It's not Shabbos. It's a Monday night. I said before or after you can. You, you can light before nightfall. And you can and after. But if you light it after nightfall, what's the one caveat, Mark? You can't do it because it's Shabbos. It's not Shabbos. You can't do it's a it Monday night. If you're lighting Monday night is Pesach. Let's say Monday night is the first night of Pesach. You're lighting candles. You have to light candles. It's Yantif. But how do you light the candles? If you light them before dark, fantastic. You light the candles. But if you light it after dark, you're not allowed to light a candle on Yantif. How can you light a candle on Yantif? From an existing flame. So you have to have a pre-existing flame. And from that, you can light the candles. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Right. Very interesting. Now, um, so therefore, we said the first cup of Kiddush wine has to be lit, has to be, has to be uh, drank when after nightfall, because the mitzvah of the four cups applies after nightfall. Therefore, we don't make Kiddush until it's certainly nighttime. So after 8 or 9 p.m., the way we do it here at Chabad Palm Beach Gardens, we don't want to advertise that public Seder starts at like 9.30 p.m. You know, we won't get a big crowd. We don't want to say it's 8.30. What we, what we do is we say it's 7.30. We advertise for 7.30. 7.30, we start with the service. We dive in, it's Friday night. Come to show you dive in. By the time we finish davening, you're sitting down, it's 8 or 9 p.m., right? Now, um, what you do is, it says in the Code of Jewish Law here, you know, one of our members, interesting, told me the other day, he's a he's descendant of Reb Moshe Isterlish of Krakow, Poland. Reb Moshe Isterlish is known by his, uh, by his acronym, the Ramo. He was the author of the Code of Jewish Law. An amazing personality, 500 years ago. This is Dr. Mikhail Berman. So, According to this custom, which is not my family custom, I wonder if any of you have this custom, to wear a kittel, a white kittel like we do in Yom Kippur. Some people wear the kittel at the Seder. Nobody here does it? So, so this custom is we wear the kittel um, 
after dark and you sit in your seat to begin the Seder, it's a mitzvah to, to distribute to the children nuts and almonds and other similar objects. What is, what is the purpose of that? Of what? Nuts and almonds? Of the kittel? Oh, the kittel? So what is the purpose? The kittel on Yom Kippur we wear as a symbol of white. It's like an angel. It's a holiness, right? It's a purity from sin on Yom Kippur, atonement. So on Pesach also, it's a very you holy night. Yourself and need to declare yourself such that you deserve to wear the white. Nope, nope, that's not what I'm saying. Well, what are you saying? You missed over here the mimer we learned from the Rebbe, the mimer that was called uh, Garments of the Soul. And in that mimer, we learned, as counterintuitive as it sounds, that one would think that the clothing on the outside is influenced by what's going on inside of you. But really, the Rebbe teaches us it's inside out. That the inside of you is influenced by what you wear on the outside. You dress like a schlump. You feel like a schlump. You dress like a mensch. You feel like a mensch. And therefore, we on Shabbos, for example, we dress in our finest. Why? Because you want to feel your finest. Right? Yep. When you're Davin, you're not supposed to wear short pants. You're not supposed to wear a jacket. You're supposed to dress like you're standing before the king so that you feel like you're standing before the king. Mark, respectfully, I disagree with you. Okay. <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> like I always say. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Anyways, but let's not get, let's not get sidetracked. So where are we going over here? Uh, no problem. Find me. Find me. I actually wrote... Uh, no problem, no problem. So, after what? Well, interesting at the Seder, remember at the Seder, we read in the Haggadah that the students came to the four sages and they said, Rabbi is saying no, Rabbi is saying no, our teachers, our teachers, Igi Yazman, the time has come. Shil Kriyas Shema, of morning Shema, Shil Shacharis, right? See, that was a new time zone they entered. Because now, when they came to daybreak, now the students said it's time to, it's time to read the Shema of the morning. Because, you know, we say the Shema in the morning and the nighttime, right? So what happened then was, is that, what were they doing? What were they busy doing? And why do we read the story in the Haggadah? Because the mitzvah of the Seder night is to prolong the Seder with what? With conversation relating to the Exodus of Egypt. That's the mitzvah of the night. The word Pesach means pe mouth, sach, that talks. Pesach means conversation, not about the NFL, but conversation about our own exodus from our own spiritual bondage as our forefathers escaped their bondage, right? So that's what Pesach means. Haggadah means to talk, Haggadah. Maged means speech, right? The mitzvah of the night is to talk as long as possible, right? Again, if, if you cannot engage your family and your guests in thought-provoking conversation about the relevance of Judaism in the 21st century, why it's important to marry a Jew, why is it important to, to Jewish continuity. You know, you maybe want to quote Barry Weiss, who, who brilliantly stated recently that the definition of Judaism is not being anti-Semites. Anti Think about that. If that could pr pr provoke a conversation, many Jews today, their entire Judaism is uh, APAC fighting for Israel, FIDF fighting uh, uh, Palestinians, and uh, some other organization that's fighting uh, um, uh, media bias against Israel. Hello, is, is Judaism just all about being on the defense? Or is there anything more to Judaism? Think about that. Right there, you can spark off an hour-long conversation with your family and your children, grandchildren, about the meaning of the continuity of Judaism and the purpose of it. Because if you teach your kids that the entire oil of Judaism is about the Holocaust, I don't think that's going to be very inspiring to uh, them wanting to be Jewish, right? But if you, so what I was saying was, if you can't inspire your family to want to sit there for extended conversation, shame on you. The mitzvah of the night is for you as the patriarch and the matriarch to prepare thought-provoking questions, engaging stories, insightful comments to be able to 
continue the conversation. Now that's what you say, Steve, about going as long as you can, right? Right, and that's what the next morning everybody says, how long did your Seder go? My Seder went to 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> right. You know, I just want you to realize, when somebody says, oh, we finished our Seder in 16 minutes flat, that's like saying, I educated my children in 16 minutes. How, did, how about you? Hello, education? Education? What do you mean you did it in 16 minutes? My Seder went a lifetime. Very impressive. And by the way, Mark, that's why we say there's a Chabad custom at the very, very end of the Haggadah. The very end of that God, the last words is Chasal Sidur Pesach. This concludes the sequence of, of Pesach. Chabad doesn't say that. It's not the Chabad custom to say those words. There's a lot of different customs relating to different groups and everything. We don't say those words. Why not? Because we believe, like you just said, Mark, the Seder never ends. Education never stops. You can't say, okay, this formally concludes education. Everybody go out and have a good, have a good time. Education never ends, right? You know, when parents say to me, where do we go wrong? We sent our kid to Hebrew school. Oh. Uh, he married an engine. Where did we go wrong? And I say education didn't start at Hebrew school. And it didn't end the uh, graduation. Education started at, at, at his conception. And education goes on forever. It's, it's how you live your life. It's not anything you can subcontract. It's who you are. So, yeah. So, so I haven't gone into your question yet, Steve. But the Seder goes. You agree with me, Mark. Fantastic. So, so the Seder, you, on the back end, you want to keep the Seder as long as possible. Go till daybreak. But on on the on, with regards to the four cups, you have to have them before not before daybreak. Have to. Thanks, Israel. You have to have them before daybreak because if you don't, then 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 just like you missed it on the front end before nighttime, you're gonna miss it on the back end. Which is why it's important also to eat afikoman, which is very very important to eat afikoman before uh, midnight on the first night. Now, when is midnight, by the way? When is midnight? Hey, Mitch, almost ready. Um, Oh, yeah, I'll wrap it up here. So midnight, by the way, on, on, on Seder night, you'd think it's, 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 it's 12 p.m. It's not. Midnight is at 1.20 a.m. on Because um, remember, it's got to do with when the day starts and the day ends. That's why you need this link that Winston posted. JewishGardens.com forward slash Zmanim, Z-M-A-N-I-M, Zmanim. Um, you'll see over here, midnight is at 1.20 a.m. So you want to eat the, the Afikom in the first night before 1.20 a.m. And the second night, you can go longer, right? Let's just finish this, this halacha. Um, so it's a mitzvah to give to the kids uh, almonds and nuts and other things like that. What's the purpose? Keep them on their feet. You know, so we sometimes do put like a little box in the middle of the table with all sorts of trinkets, the heights. And then at every few minutes in the Seder, we ask a kid to take something out of the Seder and explain to us what is the connection of this item that you pulled out to Pesach. A frog, uh, I don't know. You could do anything. It's, it's really cool. You can have like, you could do anything and and, uh, and and just inspire the kids' creativity, right? And the kids come with their Pesach sheets and their stories. It could take hours. You know, Manishtan in my house, let me tell you. It could take a while. <laughs> you know? All right. Yeah. Is there a time, I'm jumping in front of this, but is there a time after the meal, if you after the gym, the, um, the rest of the Haggadah? Story. After the meal? Yeah. The, the meal is really after that, Gara. Really? If you follow. Then there's the blessings and the prayers after. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the benching. You, after the, after the meal, you just basically do the benching. Right. And you can do that. There's no time within which and, you have to do that. Yeah, you get it to until, until sunrise. It's like if you bench after a regular meal, you have to do it within a certain period of time when you bench. Oh, that's an interesting point. If you if you finished eating six hours ago, but as long as you're still sitting there, and and bear in mind, you also have look. I mean, you surely have such problems that you say that it's going so long that you have questions if I'm still on the same meal or not. If you still seated around the same table, typically it's okay, right? Now, um, the purpose is to engage the kids and get them motivated. Remember, the mitzvah of the night is the children is to inspire them, and the purpose is to really um, Socratic method to inspire them to ask questions. That's the whole Manishtana concept, is to get them to ask questions. So, so you do things differently. You change things up. So they say, why are we doing this differently? Oh, because we came out of Egypt, because we were kings. We were princes. We were treated like royalty. You know, that whole thing. Um, a, a, um, a, tin, a, a child who reached the age of education, which is, you know, the age of consciousness, when they understand the, the concept of the festival and the holiness, and they understand the conversation of the exodus from Egypt, for them, we also give them wine to drink. And um, we also pour an extra cup of wine which is more than one more one more cup beyond all the people around the table. And that is the fifth cup, the cup of Elijah, the cup of redemption. The reason for that, by the way, Marty, is because the, there's actually a fifth expression of redemption in the Torah, um, in addition to the four that I mentioned. And the last one is the Hevesi, and I will bring you. 
And that corresponds to the future redemption. You know, there's four expressions of redemption because there were four exiles. There was the Egyptian exodus, the Persian exodus, the um, the Persian, what's saying? There was the Babylonian. No, Persian. No, sorry. Egyptian. Persian, yeah, maybe the Greek and the Roman, but then there's the the future one is the is the exodus of, of Mashiach. So there's four exiles, and the fifth redemption is the one that's going to be forever. That's the coming of Mashiach, and that's when we while well, we have the fifth cup of wine, also corresponding to one more concept, which is you know you have four children at the seder: the smart, the, the wise, the wicked, the simple, and the one that does not know how to ask. Right. So um, these four sons all have something in common. You know what that is? That, that they all showed up. But the Rebbe said that there's a fifth son. Who's the fifth son? He's the guy that didn't get the memo that tonight is Pesach. Waiting for an electric he, he's in a, in, a, in a casino in the Bahamas tonight. He doesn't even know that. He's like, oh, that was tonight? Uh, no, that's that's that one. And that's what the Rebbe said. Chabad rabbis, you go ahead and go get those fifth sons. And that's why we have the fifth cup of wine corresponding to those people. All right? Guys, we're going to end up over here. Good morning to Michael from Germany and Winston from Indonesia and Sobra. Thank you, everybody. We'll carry on, carry on, God willing, tomorrow. Lots to learn. Take care and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to sell your comments online. Um, GeorgeGardens.com forward slash set me free.